Okay, hey guys again. We're going to go ahead and do exercise two of Introduction to LabVIEW. So we're going to go ahead and look at our uh, challenge again today. So we have to modify our Fahrenheit to Celsius program, which we did last week or in the last video, to measure the temperature every second, um, which is 1000 milliseconds for 10 seconds, and display the temperature history in an array on the front panel. No, you must use the run button only, not the run continuous button. So that means we can't hit our button right here, which allowed us to go back and forth as much as we wanted. This time we're going to have to actually use our single area. So what we're going to have to do here is, if you look at the solution, we're going to have a loop and we're going to have an array down here. So there's going to be 10, but we're going to put 11, which you see right here. That way you see that the 10th time it's not going, or the 11th time it's not going through. And then if I have time, we'll do the bonus as well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and to our lab view. Now I'm just going to keep what we have here um, because it's simpler and I don't want to do all the work again. So we're going to have to go ahead and make a structure and we need to use a for loop because we don't want to go until we tell it to stop. Um, a while loop is going to tell us, with a, if we build a while loop, there's going to be this little stop button down here and we have to make a variable that tells us when to stop. And we don't want to do that, so we want it timed for how many rotations we're going to do through the loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to make ours so that you can put numbers in it. So right here, this is going to be where we're going to use an integer. So we're going to make a constant for this. We're going to go ahead and put 10. So this means it's going to go through this loop 10 times, and then it's going to stop. And after the 10th time, it'll it's not going to do anything. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is... If you go ahead and look at the his, um, we don't have an array. We have this little piece here. So we're going to have to put an array out here. So we're going to go to array and matrix. And we're going to build an array under array comma matrix. And we're going to build that. And uh oh, we have an issue. There's nothing here. It just shows a block. It so the, we have to tell the array what kind of um, the variables going into it or numbers going into it um, so we're going to put a value of a numeric we're just going to put a numeric indicator we're going to drag this in here and now it's going to show our numeric so we're going to go ahead and drag this out 11 times so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and slide it down Nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so now we have eleven. So now we have an array, and it's going to show up as a value array. So we're going to put this outside of our loop because we want it um, to display after every piece. So we're just going to go ahead and take this wire because this is going to be the answer to our equation. We're just going to run it through our array uh, into our array. So we can go ahead and run this now. Um, and it's just going to do it really fast. And the we don't want it to do that. So it's got our time. And it's going to go through 10 times. But there's nothing telling it how long to wait before, we, uh, before it goes to the next loop. It's just going to do it as fast as it can possibly process it. Because we have, right out of our equation, we just have this wire running outside of our array. Or of our loop into the array. Oh, and we want to have this array out here because if it's inside... Um, our we gotta just a second. If this is inside, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna sh allow us to connect it. Um, and it just shows up shows up as a different terminal. So we're just gonna go ahead and run this out to outside, and it's gonna allow us to connect. Um, so we have nothing telling us how long to keep it for. So we're going to just take a timing piece and it said wait for 1000 milliseconds which is just one second. Um, right here it says for every second 10 milliseconds for 10 seconds which is our 10 rotations through our loop. So we're going to set it to one second so each loop is one second. So we're going to go ahead and go in our uh, functions and we're going to go into the timing and we're going to say wait in milliseconds. Now you see it says milliseconds timer value and 
milliseconds to wait. We want it going in wait. So we're just going to right click on this and go to create constant and that's just going to automatically connect it. You can do it with any of these. For these I could have just clicked here and created constant instead of um, putting going in and clicking numerics. Um, so once I have that built I have my it's got a constant here so now I have to make it 1000 milliseconds because 1000 milliseconds is one second so now it's gonna wait you just place this in the loop we can't put it outside or else it won't do anything um, so we're gonna head actually I'm gonna show you if we take this and cut it and put it out here it's not gonna do anything it's still gonna fly through there really 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 fast um, so we can go ahead and change this to like here we're going to continuously. It's just going to do it super fast. It's not going to do anything. So we're going to move that back into here. So it's going to wait one second or 1,000 milliseconds for every loop before it goes back through again. So now we're going to try this again and we're going to run this just with the run button. So I have this. Now you see it's slowly changing. So we're going to head put 23 in here. It should change by one of these. Okay, yes. So you're going to see it shows up as change here. So we're going to run that again. We're going to change these really fast. So we're going to have 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Um, now it shows up as we have all of our new numbers in here. And it shows in our arrays. Um, so it's done it 10 times. And you see we ended at 32 so it's going to end up as 0 the last two times so that's how this piece works um, you can use while loops for anything else now we're going to go ahead and make our bonus parts the bonus we're going to go up to the bonus um, it says if you have oh whoops <laughs> it wants us to okay bonus create a separate loop with a countdown timer from 10 seconds to 0 to show how much time is left so what we're going to do now is, if you look, we're going to make a whole other while loop. And we're going to have it here. And we're going to use a while loop this time instead of a for loop. So we're going to go ahead and make our while loop. So we got our while loop. And then we're going to have to have it wait for or a countdown every 10 times. So we're going to have to have the weight the same inside or else it won't um, tell that this is going through um, as many times as it does. So neither of these are actually directly connected. What we're going to do is make the wait time for each loop separately. Um, so it's uh, going to be the same weight so it will go through the loops at the same time. So we're going to put our time in here. I just copied and pasted it. Now how are we going to tell the for loop? to go through a certain amount of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a shift register in our for loop, or our while loop. So we're going to right click on our while loop. We're going to click add shift register. So this is going to make it so the loop keeps going around and around and around. Now it doesn't have anything telling it how long to go. So we're going to look at this and it says 10 because we have 10 going through right here. So we're going to go ahead and put our 10 actually we're going to create a constant with that because I just showed you how to do that we're going to create after I connect these wires together okay so the wires are now con not connected we're going to create you know what this isn't working we'll do it manually okay yeah that works so we'll run our constant in here um, for some reason it wasn't letting me do it the other way. So now that we have our constant built, uh, we have to build a countdown button like it says in our bonus solution. So it's going to be, we're going to have a countdown timer, so we're going to need another indicator on our block panel. So we're going to add numeric indicator and we're going to name it countdown. So now it shows our countdown and we're going to have 
we have to have it subtract one for every loop. So we're going to go into our numeric and we're going to make a minus one piece. So we're going to delete this wire right here. And we're going to connect this to it. And it's really messy. So what we can do, since it's messy as off topic, we right click on our wire and we can click clean up wire. And this will clean up our wire. So now it's all cleaned up. Now it's minus one and then just going back through. So now we have to run our wire to it. So we have run our wire to it. So now it's minus one for each. But we don't have anything telling it to stop when it's done. So we're going to look at what he did. And he's going to have a converter from a orange to a green, which is going to be a um, number with decimals into a boolean. So we're going to have to find a comparison. Um, so we're going to go into our comparisons and when you get to the end of your countdown over here the number is going to be zero because it's going to it goes around and it shows that it went around ten times because what this shift register does is it saves this number so this basically goes back around into here so this is going to be your initial number so it goes through this and it's going to say minus one and so all of a sudden this number is nine and then minus one again again and then it's eight and so on and so forth until it gets to zero, which is going to be, since we have our times in the same, um, our weight's going to be the same, so it's going to end at the same time. So when this gets to zero, we want it to stop right here. Um, so our countdown is zero. Now, we need something that will make it do that from zero. So we're going to go in here, and we're going to choose equal to zero, because once it's equal to zero, we want it to stop it. So if you look, it has a DBL in here and a boolean. So we're just going to run our wire from our DBL into the equal zero and then into our boolean into our stop. So this is going to ask is that number coming out from here in the countdown is this equal to zero? And if not it's going to show up as false and if it is it's going to show up as true. So it's right now it's at zero so it's going to say it's true but you could use any of these for stuff um, Basically, it's going to say, if this is yeah, less than zero, then it's true. But if it's not, it's false. And it's just going to be either a true or false that you can use with only booleans. So we're going to go ahead and test this out. We're only going to hit it once. So all of a sudden, it shows us our countdown. So we have to hurry and change our numbers really fast. Um, so we can see all of our numbers. So once it gets to zero, it's going to change all these. And it's going to end your program because this little stop button ends your program. Now, um, if we wanted to make this uh, wait a little bit longer in between, you could just change this. So we could change it to two seconds in between each loop. So you'd have a little bit more time. So now we have two seconds, and it's a lot faster. You can choose your numbers. It waits two seconds first before it goes. And I'm just picking random numbers. Let's do... 96 and it's just waiting once it's done once again it's still gonna display your array when it's all done and you see the 11th one doesn't have anything in it because it stopped at 10 so that was the up here this was your regular assignment and down here was your bonus assignment to please Mr. McKeel I hope this tutorial helped um, Watch my next video. <laughs>